interest in fashion that spanned the decades. Even from the early years, there was a spirit of fun and adventure, despite the fact they were required to wear uniforms. When it was off to college for a young lady, it was an enormous step to leave her parents and to make her home at the Valdosta State Woman's College. <laughs> to her surprise, her fashion statement became a uniform, which was wholesome and serviceable, and was designed to inspire a demeanor befitting of a proper young lady. It was hard to be mischievous when wearing such a distinctive ensemble. There were seasonal versions of the attire. The spring uniform consisted of a white waist, white shirt, and straw hat, which is modeled today by Dr. Melanie Bird of the VSU History Department. This outfit was worn for all evening occasions throughout the year and at all times after April the 1st. In the fall and winter, the girls wore suit uniforms, which were long wool skirts, a wool jacket, a white shirt and tie, with a hat to top off the outfit. Restrictions were even placed on the type of sports outfits one wore and the evolution of the sports outfit was most interesting. It began with a long, covered look, which took its shape in the much-hated bloomer outfit, modeled here by Judy O'Brien of VSU Library. The Kappas and Lambdas fielded teams dressed in black and white midi blouses and those despised and distinctive bloomers. Eventually, the uniform changed into long shorts and finally into a much more acceptable short gym dress, which was at long last appointed as the official uniform for sporting events. <laughs> it seemed that the uniform would be used forever. When it was finally decided that it would no longer be required, the girls felt a sense of liberation. But still, they felt it important to dress well and to show their school spirit. At that time, a typical outfit included a knit cardigan, often inscribed with GSWC, a white blouse, full plaid skirt, bobby socks, and loafers. Donna Jones of the VSU Library staff models an example of this new mode of dress. Since those first years in the realm of fashion, we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> there was an equally important fashion statement in the costumes that were made for the plays, parties, and traditional celebrations such as May Day and the Christmas feast. These activities gave the young ladies the opportunity to challenge their creativity and to construct some elaborate and wonderful creations that were quite elegant. To demonstrate their expertise, Nikki Dunlop, a current student at VSU, is modeling for you a gown given to the archives by Sarah Tillman, class of 51 but it was worn to a Christmas festival in 1949. Other favorite pastimes of the young ladies were horseback riding, <laughs> swimming, and dancing. Each of these activities had their official costumes. Unfortunately, the swimming suit we have in the archives is just too threadbare to present to you. <laughs> but we do have one of the dance costumes to show you. Here, Ruth Davis, daughter of Deborah Davis of the archives, models a short green suit which was donated by Mary Remmer Paramore, class of 1951. As you can see, it permitted freedom of movement and expressive motions including those Mrs. Valenti called Leap 
run, run. were often called upon to perform throughout the year, but they were especially featured at the May Day celebration and the Christmas festival. Our dance instructor, Eric Nielsen, and I were walking around and looking at the pictures, and we were very impressed with the influence of Martha Graham and Isadora Duncan in some of the poses. 